Is Mexico part of North America or Central America? Hi Spanish learners and welcome to another episode of Spanish Academy TV. Today we are putting Spanish lesson on pause and we'll be having a fun geography and history lesson instead. Ready to learn a ton of awesome facts about Latin America? Vamos! Let's learn whether Mexico is part of North America or Central America. To answer this question, we'll need to define the regions in the Americas. Did you know that there are 35 countries in the Americas? The Americas are divided into three geographical regions, North America, Central America, and the Caribbean, South America. But wait, what about Latin America? Where is this on the map? Lots of people think Latin America includes every country south of the United States. Well, it's slightly more complicated than that. It's true, Latin America is confined to the geographical region of the Americas. It includes 26 countries where a Romance language is spoken, they are ruled by a country that speaks a Romance language, one, a Romance language is spoken, Spanish, French, or Portuguese. Two, the people were ruled by a country that speaks a Romance language, like Spain, France, or Portugal. In a few cases, they still are. Let's start from the south for a change. The continent of South America extends from the southernmost tip of Chile northward to Colombia's northern border with Panama, near the Panama Canal. South America contains 12 countries, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, Guyana. The mainland of South America also contains one territory of France called French Guiana. Also, Easter Island, a part of Chile, the ABC Islands of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Falkland Islands, a British overseas territory, and Trinidad and Tobago may be considered part of South America. Basically, North America includes all the countries from Canada and Greenland to the Caribbean islands and south to Panama. Panama's border with Colombia marks the separation between North and South America. Wait, what? I thought Panama was in Central America. The fact is, Central America is not its own continent. It's a regional distinction that refers to the isthmus that connects North and South America. Isthmus. Now that's a funny word. What does it mean? An isthmus is a narrow strip of land with sea on either side, forming a link between two larger areas of land. ¿Cómo se dice isthmus? El istmo. To make a long story short, Central America is actually a part of North America, but it has its own defining culture and history. More on that in a moment. Yet, the question remains, is Mexico part of Central America? The short answer is no. Mexico is not part of Central America. Central America is the southernmost region of North America, located between Mexico and South America. These seven small countries in Central America share geographical similarities. Almost every country has coasts on both oceans. They also have similar climates, tropics and mountains, and volcanic topography. Central America contains seven countries, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Belize. So how come Mexico isn't part of Central America? Well, as we learned, Central America is a connecting isthmus. This isthmus arguably starts with the isthmus of Tehuantepec in Mexico, which would mean that a portion of Mexico is technically in Central America. However, because it's a tiny fraction of the country of Mexico, the country is not part of Central America. Did you know that Mexico and Greenland are about the same size? Both these vast North American countries are just under 2 million square kilometers. To put it from another perspective, the US is about five times the size of Mexico. While Mexico and Central America share a common language, a distinction in ruling between Mexico and Central America has existed since the beginning of recorded human history. 
Several ethnic groups merged to form the prominent Aztec Empire in the center of modern-day Mexico during the 14th century. This powerful people was known for their impressive cities, advanced agricultural system, and ritual sacrifices. Some Aztec groups still exist in Mexico today, and their culture has greatly influenced Mexican identity. Even the Mexican flag illustrates the influence the Aztecs have had on modern Mexican culture. The design of Mexico's coat of arms comes from Aztec myth. As the story goes, the leader of the Aztec, a warrior named Tenoch, was visited in his dreams by the god of war and told to settle where he saw an eagle perched on a prickly cactus eating a serpent. He discovered this site on an island in the middle of a lake surrounded by volcanoes. The Aztec capital was located where Mexico City is now. The colors of the Mexican flag are green, white, and red. The green represents hope and the white unity of the Mexican nation. The red stands for the blood of the national heroes. The Maya Empire, on the other hand, reached from the southernmost part of Mexico into Central America. In approximately 750 BCE, the Mayans built their first cities. The Mayan Empire lasted for centuries until the Spanish Spanish conquered them in 1519. However, despite Spanish rule, many Mayan communities survived. The influence of the Maya was, and still is, very strong. Some of the most prominent cultural aspects include the Mayan calendar, the concept of zero, and farming techniques. Presently, 21 distinct Mayan groups live in Guatemala, comprising over half of the population. That's why Guatemala is considered the heart of the Mayan civilization to this day. The first Spanish settlements started appearing in the 1500s, leading to violent clashes and wars between the indigenous people of the Aztec and Maya civilizations and Spanish conquistadors. The Spanish divided their kingdom into New Spain from the US to the border of Panama and New Granada from Panama to South America. Spain divided New Spain into different governing territories in present-day Mexico and Central America. Even when Mexico and Central America gained independence from Spain, they did so separately. Already divided under Spanish rule, the Mexican Empire and the Central American Federation formed after each gained independence. Five countries in Central America declared independence from Spain on September 15, 1821, joining together against Spanish forces to win their collective and individual independence as nations. In other words, 199 years ago, the Provincial Council of Guatemala joined forces with Central American leaders from Nicaragua, Costa Rica, El Salvador, and Honduras to draft debate and signed the proclamation known as the Act of Independence for Central America. Each country has its own colorful traditions, including parades, dancing, and public speeches. And there is an interesting collective tradition involving carrying a torch. Each year, beginning on September 9th, local patriots carry a torch by foot from Guatemala to Costa Rica, passing from hand to hand through all five countries to celebrate Independence Day on September 15th. The torches represent a traditional symbol of hope, and people line the streets to observe this long tradition. The Central American countries share a united history. In 1821, they formed the Federal Republic of Central America. Only Panama was not included. Since gaining independence in 1821, Guatemala has refused to recognize all or even part of Belize, its small English-speaking neighbor. Therefore, Belize was not a recognized state of the Federal Republic. The Federal Republic of Central America did not include Mexico either. It actually merged with the Empire of Mexico from 1822 to 1823. However, it soon re-established itself as its own separate entity. In 18 in 1940, the Federal Republic of Central America became the independent countries we know today. Yet, periodic attempts to restore the Federal Republic of Central America has been made since its dissolution. Mexico celebrates its independence from Spain each year on September 16th, 
with fireworks, food, dance, and music. Flags, flowers, and decorations in the red, white, and green appear in cities and towns across Mexico. People shout, Viva Mexico! Long live Mexico! Or, Viva la Independencia! Despite some similarities, differences exist between the Mexican and Central American cultures. Although Central America is no longer one nation plus Panama, a feeling of unity among the nations still exists. Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua are all under the same visa. This means that residents of these nations do not need a passport to travel between countries. Foreigners can travel to these four countries on the same visa without having to renew it. While Central Americans can travel freely between countries in their region, it is more difficult to enter Mexico. They require a visa and interview process, which makes the distinction between Central America and Mexico very clear. Mexico's population is 126.2 million. It is the only country in Latin America that borders an English-speaking country, the United States. Because of this, Mexico has a unique political and cultural position. The US and Mexico exchange aspects of language, food, and pop culture. The issue of immigration gives Mexico a political identity of its own. The issues that Mexico faces are not the same as those that the Central American countries face. Because of Mexico's large size, it is a powerhouse of culture. Mexican movies, music, television, and food flow out of the country and influence the areas around them, including Central America. Mexico and Central America share cultural aspects due to Mexico's cultural and economic power. As you can probably guess, based on having watched this video, Mexicans do not identify themselves as being part of Central America. For hundreds of years, there has been a distinction between the peoples of Central America and Mexico. As such, Mexico takes great pride in its unique culture and history. Furthermore, sharing a border with an English-speaking country creates influences and cultural aspects that no other Latin American culture has. Download Homeschool Spanish Academy's free ebook called Weird and Wacky Spanish Stories for Beginners. It's full of interesting stories, great pictures, and English to Spanish parallel texts. It's best suited for A2 level and above, but it's also great for beginners who wish to improve their fluency through reading. It's fun for kids and adults. Click the link below to access this free PDF. Gracias! Adios! I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel for all Spanish learning updates. Hasta pronto!